Hey, it's David Hamilton here from socialexpression.net, social anxiety coach. And I uh, wanted to talk today about um, the late, great Albert Ellis and two, two concepts that um, he uses that are very, very powerful from his system of rational emotive therapy, which was pretty foundational, I think, for... Um, a lot of stuff in modern therapies. His stuff is great. Um, sometimes a bit heady, but overall very, very good stuff. And he talks about two things in particular. One is catastrophizing, and two is masturbation, <laughs> which is funny. Albert Ellis was kind of a lewd and crude, outspoken guy he became, and he was not afraid to use sexual terminology or sexual references. Um, and catastrophizing is when we turn a situation into a huge deal as if it's you know the end of our world or the end of our life as we know it um, so I can't believe you know that I lost my job today what am I gonna do my life is over um, I can't believe that um, she broke up with me what am I gonna do I'm a terrible person I didn't do things right or she's a terrible person or whatever it just gets taken to the extreme into this catastrophe and he calls it catastrophizing so um, one thing to know is when you start to feel that way and really with strong conviction that this is how reality is and things are terrible that's your signal that you are catastrophizing, that you are making a huge deal out of what is not a huge deal, it's just a deal. And how you make it a huge deal or a terrible deal or whatever adjective we want to put on the, the, the just what it is, is how you're catastrophizing it. Or if you see it and go, okay, this, this is a tough situation that um, I lost my job and my girlfriend the same week <laughs> or boyfriend if you're a girl or whatever your sexual orientation is. Um, and this is terrible, you know, this feels terrible, not this is terrible, but I feel terrible, okay, instead of the situation is terrible. I'm just saying the situation is what it is. I feel terrible and... I'm going to deal with the best I can. Can you see the difference between those two perspectives? It's a huge difference. Massive, massive difference with not only the verbiage, but more the attitude is what I'm talking about, okay? Um, because you could tell yourself the words, you know, you could be like, you know what, this is, this is a situation and it's terrible. Um, I feel terrible, not the situation is terrible, but I feel terrible and I'm going to get through this and you could try to like motivate yourself through it, but your attitude underneath could still be, this situation is the worst in the world. Okay, so it's not just about the words. The words are important, but it's about your attitude, your underlying energy, your disposition behind it is more important, really. Um, so that's catastrophizing. Now, masturbation has to do with the musts, the shoulds, I ought to, I have to kind of feeling in conversation, you know, um, thoughts and kind of feeling combined web of I must get over the social anxiety in order to get the job that I want. I must get over social anxiety in order to meet the person of my dreams. I must, um, you know, get a promotion or a, ra a raise or else um, I, whatever, you know, the must, the have, the should, the pressure. There is no mushrooms or pressures, really. There, there aren't any. They're all made up, and we're taught to use them, and and they help push us forward, I guess. You know, they get output out of us and productivity and some a lot. You know, that's what their intent is. Although they don't often, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. We we get into procrastination and resistance because it's maybe something we don't want to do, but we feel we should or we must do. Um, so that's what masturbation is and avoiding those conversations so not avoiding but recognizing them when they happen and going oh I don't have to do that so you know I must please my boss in order to get a raise well you don't have to okay you might feel that you have to and you know to get a raise but it's better said if I please my boss then I'll probably get a raise 
But that doesn't mean my world's going to come to an end and that I'm a bad person, right? That's the masturbation. So just wanted to quickly go over those uh, two concepts there. They're kind of cool to consider and play with just to bring you new awareness in your life. Um, you know, whenever I talk about something, um, I rarely want you to take it and here's here's your step-by-step -step model and here's what you do and what you say. It's, it's not like that. It's here's concepts to try on and play with them and see how they work for you because not everything is going to work for, for everybody. Um, I think there are certain solid concepts that are pretty foundational, but you have to try them on for yourself. There is no XYZ formula to, you know, uh, work through your social anxiety because everyone's different. Everyone has their different issues. You've got to try different things. For instance, in my program, I, you know, give some people in the first lesson, I say, you know, let's lay, write out your irrational beliefs and write out the beliefs you want to have and then say them both in the mirror. And some people, when they say their new beliefs, they go, oh, that feels great. And some people say their new beliefs and they go, why did I feel so anxious and weird? I gave two people the same thing to do, but one felt one way and one felt the other way. But I never said, do this so that you can make your new beliefs true. I said, I want you to be aware of what happens. And yeah, we do have to practice our new beliefs, but don't, you know, if you try to enforce them on yourself and it's not easy and light and it's going to be challenging, but I'm not, I'm not saying easy and light, but if it's like, if it's like, you know, putting a, a round peg in a square hole, then maybe a different approach needs to be used. And, you know, that's why it's individual to everybody. So you need to be experimental and try things. And with Dissolve Social Anxiety, the, the program, I give a lot of stuff. I definitely have, you know, it's based a lot on awareness and mindfulness, but it's trying things on. I give you a lot of stuff so you can pick and choose what you like and what starts to make you better, you know, uh, towards your recovery and getting into your life really and getting your life back. So just want to say that about co using concepts and principles rather than cookie cutter systems, okay? Um, so leave your comments, questions, feedback below, and talk to you guys later. Bye.